Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Welcome again to the channel of Madiscarting Ilocano. At ito na naman po ang inyong lingkod, Sir Lopez, para sa kursong Criminology. Ang tatalakayin natin ngayong araw ay tungkol sa Fire Triangle Theory. Pero bago ang lahat, kung hindi pa kayo nakakapag-subscribe sa ating channel, ay mangyari lamang na pindutin nyo na ang subscribe button dyan sa baba at kalimbangin na rin ang ating kampana para updated kayo sa mga susunod pa nating mga videos. Bago natin talakayin ang Fire Triangle Theory, ay alamin muna natin kung ano ang definition ng salitang fire. Fire, ayon sa dictionary.com, fire, fire definition, state, process, or instance of combustion in which fuel or other material in which fuel or other material is ignited and combined with oxygen, giving off light, heat, and flame. So, ito po ang definition ng fire ayon sa definition.com. So, kung isi-simplify natin, fire is a process of combustion. Or sometimes, we call it fire is a process of burning or it is a process of oxidation. So I repeat, fire is a process of burning. Or sometimes we call it, fire is a process of combustion. Or sometimes we call it, fire is a process of oxidation. Kapag sinabi natin oxidation, it is a change of matter. In other reference, they call it, fire is a rapid oxidation. So, pay attention to the word process, state, at saka insults. These are the key words to define the word fire. Is that clear? So, dahil sa tatlong nabanggit na salita, process, instance, or state, lalabas na ang fire ay hindi pala isang bagay kung hindi ito ay isang proseso. So, sabi ng isa nating estudyante, Sir, kung hindi bagay or object ang fire, bakit nakikita? Bakit ito ay aking nakikita? Ang sabi naman natin, ang nakikita mo ay flame, hindi ang fire. Kasi, flame is incandescent gas or it is a burning vapor. So, ang nakikita ng ating estudyante ay hindi fire kung hindi ito ay tinatawag na flame. So, to make it clear, fire is a process of burning, combustion, or oxidation. Next na tanong, kailan tayo magkakaroon ng process of combustion, process of oxidation, or process of burning? Dito ngayon, papasok yung tinatawag natin Fire Triangle Theory. So kapag sinabi natin Fire Triangle Theory, it is a graphical representation of heat, fuel, and oxygen. The combination of these three elements in the proper proportion start the process of burning na kung tawagin natin ay fire. In order that there must be a fire, the three elements must be present. Namely, heat, fuel, and oxygen. Bakit kailangan natin malaman ang tatlong elemento na ito? Ito ay napakahalaga na ating malaman sapagkat kung minsan ang sunog ay Mapangani. At kung hindi natin alam kung paano ito pupuksain, ay lalong mapanganib sa buhay at ari-arian ng isang tao. Mahalaga na malaman natin ang tatlong elemento na ito para makontrol o mapuksa natin ang isang bagay na nasusunog. Ang pinakamabisang paraan para makontrol o mapuksa ang bagay na nasusunog ay tanggalin mo lamang ang isa sa mga elemento nito either the heat element the fuel element or 
the oxygen element. And if one of the elements is not present in that particular situation, there would be no fire. Tulad ng nabanggit ko, kailangan nating malaman ang tatlong elements ng fire para alam natin kung paano ito buksain. Kung tatanggalin natin ang heat element, ang tawag natin dyan ay cooling method. Usually, ang ginagamit natin na extinguishing materials dito ay water. Uh, reviewing, pay attention to the word cooling method. This method tend to eliminate the heat element of fire. Usually, ang material na ginagamit sa cooling method ay water. At kapag ang tinatanggal naman natin ay fuel, ang tawag naman natin dito ay starving. Again, I want to italize the word starving. Starving is a process of removing the fuel element in the triangle of fire. So, if we are now going to remove the oxygen, ang tawag naman natin dito ay blanketing. So, I want again to italize the word blanketing. Usually, ang ginagamit na paraan sa blanketing method ay sa pamamagitan ng basang tuwalya o kaya basang kumot at tinatakpan ang uh, lugar na kung saan ay may apoy. So, in that way, the oxygen cannot penetrate and complete the process of combustion. At kung ang sunog naman ay nangyari sa oil refinery or sa airport, ang usually na ginagamit dito ay yung special kind of chemical na kung tawagin nila ay foam. So, foam has the capability to, to cover the area of fire and avoiding the entry of oxygen to complete the process of oxidation or process of burning. Okay, ngayon, isa-isahin natin tatalakayin ang tatlong elements of fire. Punahin natin ang heat. Heat, kapag sinabi natin heat, it is defined as a form of energy generated by the transformation of some other form of energy as in combustion or burning. So, sa madaling salita, heat is a form of energy. So, since it is a form of energy, meron tayong limang categories dito. Una ay yung chemical heat energy. Kapag sinabi natin chemical heat energy, ito ay energy mula sa reaksyon ng mga chemicals tulad ng decompositions at heat of solutions. Meron din tayong tinatawag na Heat coming from friction or compression. Ang tawag naman natin dito ay mechanical heat energy. At ito ang pangalawang category. Pangatlo ay electrical energy. Heat results from electricity such as resistance heating. Okay? So next is solar energy. That is the Fourth category, energy resulting from the heat of the sun confining the even distribution of radiated rays from the sun in one area. And the last category of heat energy is the nuclear energy. The nuclear energy is resulting from the breaking or combining of atom. But take note, Heat of fusion, ang tawag natin if we are separating or breaking of the atom at heat of fusion naman, ang tawag natin kapag ito ay combination of atom or combining of atom together. So ulitin natin ang limang kategori sa heat. Number one, chemical heat energy. Number two, mechanical heat energy. Number three, electric. Number three, electrical heat energy. Number four, solar. Number four, solar energy. And number five is nuclear energy. So these are the five 
categories of heat energy. So, bilang isang estudyante ng terminology, mahalaga rin na maintindihan natin how heat transfer. Then, we have four different ways to transfer heat energy. Number one is conduction. Conduction means the passage of heat energy through or within a material because of direct contact such as a burning waste basket heating a nearby house which ignites in heat the drapes hanging behind until they burst into flame. So first one is conduction. When we say conduction, it is the passage of heat energy through or within a material because of direct contact. So, if there are two materials and there is a direct contact from each, if there are two materials and there is a direct contact from each other, heat is transferred from one to the other. Ang tawag natin yan ay conduction. Malawa ay yung tinatawag nating conviction. Heat is transferred through liquid or gas. At yung pangatlo ay yung tinatawag nating radiation. Heat is transferred through the electromagnetic waves. At yung pangapat ay yung tinatawag nating direct plane contact. So that these are the four ways to transfer heat energy. So, punta naman tayo sa another element of fire na kung tawagin natin ay fuel. So, what is fuel? Fuel is any materials or substances capable of burning can be considered as fuel. I repeat, when we say fuel, any materials or substances capable of burning can be considered as fuel. Take note, no fuel will burn unless it is in a vapor state. There are usually four classifications of fuels. Pero tayong tinatawag na class A fuel o ito yung uh, ordinary combustible materials. Example natin dito is wood o kaya ay kahoy. Pangalawang classification of fuel ay class B o ito naman yung tinatawag natin gas or liquid fuels. Example naman natin dito is the liquefied petroleum gas. So, gas or liquid fuels are categorized as class B. Okay? So, pangatlong category is what we call class C. When we say class C, these are the fuel coming from the electrical fuel. So, electrical fuels are coming from the electrical energy or the electrical appliances. At yung pang-apat ay yung tinatawag natin class D. These are metallic fuel. Example natin dito is yung gunpowder o kaya ay yung magnesium. At meron ding ibang author na nagdagdag ng class E. Sabi nila, when we say class E fuel, ito yung mga combination ng class A, class B, class C, at class D. At meron ding panghuli yung class K. Kapag sinabi natin class K, these are the ordinary cooking materials such as cooking oil. So, these are the categories of fuel. So, punta na tayo sa huling element of fire na kung tawagin natin ay oxygen. So, oxygen is a colorless oxygen is a colorless and odorless gas. A composition of air which is approximately 21% by volume. So, oxygen is the most common oxidizing agent in fire because it is abundant in the air. 21% of air is oxygen. If the oxygen is only 12%, it is insufficient to produce fire. While 14 to 15% oxygen, it can support last point. Take note, 
15 of take note, 14 to 15 percent of oxygen, it can support plus point. And 16 to 21 percent of oxygen can support fire point. So take note, 12 percent oxygen, no fire. 14 percent plus point. And 21 percent fire point. So that's it. So that is all about the fire triangle theory. Take note, in fire triangle theories, there are three elements. The heat, the fuel, and the oxygen. So hanggang dito na lamang ang ating talakayan para sa topic na ito. Sa susunod nating pagkikita ay tatalakay naman natin ang destructive process of fire. So hanggang sa muli, Ito po ang yung lingkod, Sir Lopez, para sa kursong Criminology. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagsubaybay at magandang araw po sa ating lahat.